Hello, divine creations, divine marvels, children of God. Yes, I mean you, you and me, all of us, divine creations, divine marvels, meaning we were made by something divine, by something sacred and holy. And being made by that thing, we are actually like that thing. You know, if you think about, um, you know, if, if, we, if you make a work of art, say, out of clay, then, then the, the final thing you make, you know, let's say there's this big lump, lump of clay and you take some clay off and then you make something out of it. Well, that thing is its own thing, but it also, it also has some of the characteristics, some of the quality of that which it was made from. My understanding is that all of us are like God in the sense that we're made from or made of God. And hence we have some of the qualities, characteristics of our maker. It's pretty amazing to think about. You know, I, I heard a similar idea a long time ago uh, by, um, by a physicist, Carl Sagan, who said, how can we not yearn for the stars when we are made of them? So from a scientific point of view, everything we see around us here on this earth is, is birthed from the sun, the sun, uh, the sun uh, exploded at a certain, let me see, the, what are the physics of it? Everything in the, in the, from a physical point of view, everything from in the physical universe is made from the explosion of stars. Uh, my, my physics is a little rusty. At one point I knew quite a bit about astronomy, but it's a little rusty. But in essence, you know, all the matter of this earth and the other planets and even our particular sun was formed from other suns exploding. That's the physics point of view. And so Carl Sagan's really poetic, um, very poetic statement, how can we not yearn for the stars when we are made of them? It's just talking about our material self. But what about our spiritual self, our soul, that which inhabits these material bodies? Well... How can we not yearn for God when we are made of God or from God? You know, Bruno Green very plainly declared that the human being is a creation of love and can only live in love, that, we, that we're made from that, and in essence, we need that. Here it is. The human being is a creation of love. What was created in love can only live in love. God is love. So how can we not yearn for the divine when we not only were created by it, but in, in some way but our soul Not our physical body, but our soul is, well, as he, Bruno Gruning said, the human being is and remains divine. As it's written that Christ said, the kingdom of God is within. So maybe some of that shine that we see in the sun and in the stars is really a reflection of that divinity, that shine that lives within us. So to anyone who's new, I've dropped the name Bruno Grinning a couple times. Who's this Bruno Grinning guy? Uh, he a, was a very simple, humble man who uh, was active in post-World War II Germany. And by active, I mean he did a lot of teaching and a lot of healings happened in his presence. And when I say healing, I'm talking about the spontaneous disappearance 
of illness of, of every variety from cancer to obesity, anxiety, um, paralysis, blindness, like scenes straight out of the Bible happened around him and happened not just a few times, but tens of thousands of times. And so what I'm sharing is just his very simple teachings about life. And he said that the human being is a divine, we human beings are divine creations and divine marvels. And he said that what he was sharing was not his te teaching, but simply the teaching of Jesus Christ. So he didn't call anyone to a particular religion, but he did call people to a way of life, a way of recognizing the divinity inside, inside of them, recognizing the divinity that lives inside every person and some very simple spiritual principles that saved my life and have, um, through applying these principles, and not more, you know, we don't know how many, again, tens, maybe a hundred thousand more people have experienced miraculous healings. I say miraculous and make the little quotation thing because he said that these healings are simply, simply, um, that how these healings occur is, is not unnatural or supernatural, but completely natural, built into the laws of nature, the laws which human beings have sadly forgotten. So let's remember them, <laughs> and let's tune into this energy. It's not difficult to do. Please sit with your legs uncrossed, feet flat on the floor, hands on your legs, palms facing upwards back in an upright position, neither stiff nor slouched. And please close your eyes and now hand over all worries and all resentments. Hand them over to your notion of a higher power. And also hand over all illnesses. Separate yourself from the thought that you have an illness. Let's say you have inflammation of the knees. Please give away the idea. Oh, I have inflammation of the knees. Really separate yourself from the idea of illness completely. And then think about healing. Think about your healing. Think about health and wellness and that your body has this innate capacity to heal. And now ask to receive the healing stream, the divine energy that helps and heals in every area of our lives. And then observe your body. Noticing what you feel. Recognizing, believing, trusting that every sensation is a step towards your healing. Noticing what you feel. Become aware of any negative thoughts, hand them over.
every sensation, healing happening. I'll have to paraphrase, but Bruno once said something very close to this. He said, when are you going to recognize that you're a child of God and that you don't want to have anything to do with evil anymore? It's a very profound question. When are we going to recognize our divinity, who and what we are, and just that we're sick and tired of evil and take our stand in knowing what we are, in trusting God, and firmly, firmly opposing evil. And how does evil operate? It sends negative thoughts and negative feelings. And so it, it's not to say that we won't be tempted. You know, once we make this decision, Bruno Gruning himself said, uh, in essence, you know, that he, he himself had undergone such great temptation in this lifetime. So it's not that, oh, I make this decision and everything will just be perfect forever. That's not my understanding of how it works. But there's something about really making a decision, drawing a line in the sand, Deciding what's true, and then, in essence, deciding to fight for that. Not fight in the human sense of the word. It's almost like deciding. Um, nothing is incurable. And then every thought that comes to the contrary, vigorously opposing that thought. That's what I mean by, that's what I mean by fight. And I believe that's what Bruno Grinning was trying to convey. <clears throat> and there's a Bible verse that many people struggle with where it says, you know, where it's written that Christ said, in essence, don't, do you think that I've come to spread peace? No, I've come, to, it's something like I've come to, um, I'll have to look the verse up. But in essence, you know, I'm not going to say anything else. I'm going to look that verse up. <laughs> the idea, though, between what, what Bruno shared, it's very clear, and what I believe Christ was referring to, is to battle with evil. Not that Christ came to have us fighting each other, but that this vigorous, vigorous, it does take effort to stay mindful of these thoughts, of our thinking, and then to firmly oppose the negative thoughts and to stand in the truth no matter what. And here we are, March 2020, and here's a great example. To stay in faith no matter what's happening in the world. You know, I went to the grocery store last night and people had full-on face masks. Uh, someone someone had a face mask that covered their nose and mouth, and then they had eye goggles. And then someone else literally had something like a full-on face mask that you see in the movies. And I'm not, 
not talking about them doing anything right or wrong, but for myself, um, I noticed that there was quite the temptation. You know, my bottom line is everything is okay and everything will be okay. That doesn't mean there aren't problems. I don't deny problems, but that there's no problem that I actually need to fear. There are certainly problems that I need to address, but there's nothing that I need to fear. And what I mean by everything is okay is that everything is in God's hands and everything, um, everything serves as a lesson. I may not like it. But boy, was it was there many a temptation. And you know, some of the people in there looked very unhappy and scared. And it was quite the temptation to take some of that fear on. And I think I did take a little bit of it on. Mostly I was able to stay present and stay in faith and trust. That's what I mean by fight. And I believe that's what Bruno Gruning meant is that decide for faith, decide that God is all good and that life is under, you know, that life is. Even amongst the disorder, there's order. And then to stand by that. So let's let's continue to let's have a little time of silence to continue taking. Thank you, Diana. Yeah, I'm gonna look up that verse. Um, so let's continue to take in this good energy and take continue to decide if it's right for you. I'm not here to force a belief system on anyone, but if it feels true to you that God is completely trustworthy, maybe that's the simplest way to say it, then let's stand by that faith and trust no matter what. Continue to observe the body. Taking in the good. handing over negative thoughts as we become aware of them. So here's that quote from the Bible. 
Matthew 10, 34. Do not suppose that I've come to bring peace to the earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. So before the teachings of Bruno Gruning, I couldn't make heads or tails of the Bible because of some verses like this. But having a, a spiritual understanding of what a spiritual fight is. Now this verse makes complete sense to me. I don't believe this verse is meant to be taken literally, but that's just my understanding based on the teachings of Bruno Gruning. And his teachings have illuminated so many, so many Bible verses for me. So many things that just made no sense. And this is a prime example. The paradox of it all is if when we learn how to properly oppose evil or fight evil, then we do have peace. But if I'm understanding this verse correctly, um, what Christ is saying is that we're not going to have peace until we learn how to oppose or fight or contend with evil. And I'm not talking about evil people, places, or situations. I'm talking about the evil that comes at us, the thoughts, um, the feelings. And yes, when people behave wrongly, for us to maintain our connection to God and to have faith. And it is hard sometimes. That's my understanding of what a fight is. And that's my understanding of what that verse is referring to. The spiritual battle of staying in faith and trust. And we can just, again, March 2020, world health situation. How is it? You know, there are moments... Overall, the, it's been, it's, that, that hasn't, it hasn't been particularly stressful for me. But there are moments where there's huge amounts of fear and panic I start to feel. And, um, and in those moments, it is a, it, it's a full-on fight. It's as if the evil is trying to get control and drag me down into fear. And I have to, with vigilance, remind myself of the truth that nothing is incurable, that I am a child of God, that there's truly nothing to fear, that God's running the show. While I don't like the current um, things that are happening, that I can trust that there's underlying order and harmony that's completely dependable. And in some moments, it's not a fight. The fear thought comes and I just... In some moments, it's like an avalanche of fear thoughts, and that's where the fight is. That's where the sword is. For me, that's my understanding. And as always, please don't take my word for it. Please tune in, connect to God, and, co and come to your own understanding. So let's spend a little time in silence, seeking the direct connection with God. And if that's hard for us, asking, asking a helper we trust, such as Bruno, such as Christ, to help us have that divine connection.
I believe the fight is with ourself, or you could say our habits. There's different ways to say it with the ego. They mean the evil we've taken in. For example, this morning I had a friend who was in a little bit of a crisis. And um, so I went to go help her. And, you know, as I was driving there, I'm driving fast. And, you know, I didn't get all the details. And so what I came to realize is I have this habit of being a rescuer. Especially, especially with women, that's where it shows up most strongly. Um, and so, you know, those, and that's just one example of um, of something that's out of alignment. Like, yes, it's good, it's good to help people, and good, yes, it's good to support friends, but not from the energy of franticness or the energy of, oh my God, I've got to go rescue. <laughs> you know, of course, it wasn't fully conscious like that. But Bruno Gruden called us to reflect on ourselves, to reflect on our thoughts and feelings and actions and words, and um, to recognize ones that are in harmony and ones that aren't, and to get rid of the ones that aren't. So here's an example of you know, fighting with ourself, becoming aware of the things that disconnect us from God, becoming aware of the things that are not harmonious. And then vigorously, um, you know, then, then from there, there's such as handing it over to Bruno, um, being on the watch for it, determining to do better next time, ask, praying, asking for help. Please remove this habit and so forth and so on. And so there's this sense, I have this sense of, you know, gra- struggling with, wrestling <laughs> wrestling with maybe that's the best translation of Krieg, the German word for battle, war, to express what Bruno is trying to say is wrestling with this evil and overcoming it. So I have to overcome that habit. It's it's out of harmony. It disconnects me from God, which is not how I want to be in any in any moment. It's okay to ask God for help or to ask a helper you trust. And I would say it's beyond okay. I would say it's necessary. Bruno Granny said, only God can help us. Obviously, I went and helped my friend this morning. That doesn't make me God. But in the sense of relieving us of evil, for that we need God. And as I've shared many times, Uh, Bruno pointed out, and and this is my languaging, but that we don't don't treat illness, find the freedom from the evil. And my understanding of that is because the illness, for example, this habit of caretaking, that's just a symptom of evil. And to relieve me, yes, I can go do workshops and do counseling and read books on codependence and find some relief from that symptom. But if I really want to be free of all problems, I've got to get at the root. I don't know if all of you can hear my cat is meowing in the background. That's why I'm smiling. (laughs) Um, So through this process of self-reflection that Bruno calls us to, I was able to become aware as it was happening. I'm like, oh, I'm kind of playing the rescuer a little bit. So then there's awareness of that. Then I can ask God to remove it. I can hand it over to Bruno and trust now that that pattern is being healed and and to be aware. Now, if I start to feel a similar feeling, now that I've reflected on it, now that I'm aware of it, I can catch it. And ultimately, Bruno spoke of just observing the body and that the body gives us feedback when something is right or not right. 
Because ultimately what we're after is what Bruno called the natural human instinct, the natural ability to know what's right and what's not right. Not know up here, but just know in a very, in our, in our, in our bones, in our guts. All right, dear ones, I'm gonna begin our closing. So there's a beautiful expression I hear often, God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. So it's important for us to reflect on, is God 100% reliable or not? I've come to the conclusion, yes, God is utterly and completely reliable, all good and only good. And coming to that conclusion makes it much easier to trust. Because if we don't think God is all good, it's kind of hard to trust him, her, it. So I'd like to thank everyone for joining in. Thanks for saying hi, forever loving everything. And Diana and Gerald, thanks for saying hi, Jisoo. And good evening, Magdalena. My cat is, is, cats are so amazing. They just want what they want when they want it and nothing else will do. Like she's just going to sit outside that door and meow and beg until I open that door. And that's what we need to do with God. We need to recognize that, you know, true happiness comes from with and through God. A good life is only possible. And by good, I don't mean goody two shoes. I mean a healthy, happy, harmonious life is only going to happen through connection with God, through being guided by God, we have to just want God and seek it and seek that divine connection and divine guidance. How can we not yearn for God when we are made of or from it? Thanks so much for joining in, everyone. Take care. Much love.